I'm Martin Carver. I'm one of the vice presidents of the Society for Medieval Archaeology, uh, and I'm here to tell you something about our society, the Society for Medieval Archaeology, and, I'm, uh, and its publication, its main publication, which is the journal Medieval Archaeology. This is a, a wonderful journal, comes out once a year, uh, packed with information. Um, the latest one, for example, has uh, got a, a tremendous article about uh, uh, bracteates, which are these small, round, gold and bronze medallions which people carried about in the Anglo-Saxon period, in the 6th century particularly, in, in East Anglia and Kent. Um, they are found by us, well they're usually found by metal detectorists, um, seemingly thrown away uh, near rivers and ponds, or uh, they're found in graves, and the ones in graves usually have a little loop uh, so that they could be uh, easily suspended uh, from the neck. It's mainly women who wear them uh, suspended around their necks. And on the face of these medallions are images of fragmented animals, animal limbs, uh, and in a famous series, uh, a picture of a, a human and uh, an animal made into a kind of composite creature. Uh, the human head is wearing a diadem, and, and there's a little bird uh, whispering in his ear, and the animal is a horse. So this is supposedly, or Odin, one of the northern gods, Odin, who visited the underworld and, and, and came back. In the new study, uh, it's shown that uh, Bracteates may have come from um, the north of Germany in the first place. There's a, there's a centre making them near Hamburg. But once in England, the English made them too, and uh, the English made them in their own style. So although they had the ideas uh, in common, um, they were able to um, put their own gloss on it. It's terribly important for the early history of England. It shows that the Danes and the English shared a religion, but they weren't the same people, probably, but uh, they shared their beliefs. Strangely, uh, the later Middle Ages, too, uh, people were given to throwing stuff around in, in the countryside. Now, um, here, the, what is being picked up are small metal bottles, um, small metal ampoules, and uh, they are stamped on the outside with images denoting the, the Virgin Mary, or, or um, Thomas the Becket, or Sir James of, of Compostela. So evidently these are pilgrim flasks, these are souvenirs from pilgrim, um, pilgrim trips. And very uh, valuable and precious things, but they seem to be deliberately placed in the fields. And the latest interpretation is that this was done, although by Christian people in the 15th and 16th century, this was done as part of a ceremony for ensuring the fertility of the fields. Another anecdote from, from the new volume um, is about two people who were found buried in the Priory of St. Bees in, in Cumbria. The first was a man who was actually excavated in 1981 and found in a lead coffin. Very, very well preserved flesh, blood and all, including the wound that, that, that killed him. Um, and on his chest there was a, a wreath of human hair. Now, next to this was a, was a, a lady uh, buried in a coffin, not so well preserved, so really just a skeleton. Who was the lady? Who was the man? Was it his wife? And whose was the hair that uh, lay on the dead man's chest in a wreath like a love knot? Well, to help solve this medieval whodunit, uh, the archaeological CSI team uh, swung into action and analysed the bones and the, and the teeth, all the material remains, uh, using stable isotopes and radiocarbon dating, and all this great armoury of, of, of um, uh, new techniques that, that we have. The lady uh, was found to have um, uh, been brought up locally. Um, she had been fed a privileged diet for all her life, and uh, uh, she'd sustained a, a bad jaw injury when young, and this must have plagued her all her life until she died round about 19, uh, round about um, 50 years old. So uh, the, the question remained, who, who were these people? And, in the case of the Middle Ages, we have this wonderful additional source of evidence that prehistorians can't draw on, 
namely the documents and the sculpture and the inscriptions. And in this case, these were sufficient to uh, tell us that the lady was Maud de Lucy, who died in 1398, and the gentleman next to her was not her husband, but uh, her brother, Anthony de Lucy, who died 30 years earlier. Um, Maud de Lucy's heir was um, none other than Harry Percy Hotspur, who died as a rebel at the Battle of Shrewsbury five years after she did. So uh, Maud de Lucy was the last of her line and left no heirs unless in the uh, remains that she left, uh, the vocal remains that she left in her native Cumbria. Our medieval archaeologists are, are, are busy in the commercial sector too. They just rescued a, a, a large uh, deposit of massacred Vikings uh, on the line of the Weymouth uh, Relief Road. Um, these were 51 uh, Vikings who seem to have had an unfortunate clash with the English. Uh, there are a number of very important research investigations ongoing as well. Um, uh, 15th century tower in Tulsk in, in Ireland, a hospital, a medieval hospital in Iceland, a leper hospital in, in Winchester, the investigation of the castle at Wallingford and the Anglo-Saxon Burr there as well. These are uh, highly structured research projects which will definitely add new pictures and new chapters uh, to the story of England. Well, you, you, you can read about these and, and more in the journal uh, Medieval Archaeology. And, and our society is perpetually busy. It exists to explore the hidden world of the Middle Ages in Britain, Ireland and Europe. And the tangible remains of the Middle Ages are, are all around you in abbeys and castles and old town centres and timber frame buildings in museums in that curious green glazed pottery that keeps coming up in the allotment. But not only in these familiar places, I mean, we, we dig deeper, mapping the environment, sweeping plagues like the Black Death, the lethal winters of the Little Ice Age, the form of wooden houses on the plains and the bothies of the uplands, the domains of shepherds and princesses, and beauty of ornamented swords and the hideous wounds of battle the exquisite gowns of courtly ladies and the exhausted bodies of the lifelong working mother of ten. Well, the Middle Ages is not in the least middling. It's Europe's pivotal period, the one that gave us the countries we still have. Europe's peoples and its numerous local cultures and its diverse beliefs all, all have their roots in the thousand years that followed the end of the Roman Empire, and all underpin what happens today. So join the society and come and help us understand better this long-buried world.